There's an old saying, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Now what that means is we want to pass down a world with healthy and strong ecosystems to our children. How do we do that? Now the value of nature to people has long been recognized, but in recent years there's a concept called ecosystem services that defines these benefits. So what are these ecosystem services and why are they important to us? How are, they, how are they related to our lives, to our culture, to our food? Now, to discuss that today, we have with us, first and foremost, Ms. Anupi James. She's with the Forest Department. She is DFO of uh, Forest Utilization Shillong. And uh, welcome to the discussion, uh, Anu. And secondly, we have, of course, uh, Komlari Lin Khatpuri. She is a professor with the Department of Environment and Traditional Ecosystem of the Martin Luther Christian University. Welcome, Komlari. Thank you. So first and foremost, ecosystem services sounds very scary, uh, but simplified for us. What are these? Uh, maybe you can take this in, in parts. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, we'll start with you, Anu. Maybe you could tell us a little bit. Uh, what are these ecosystem services and how are they linked to human health and, you know, the benefits of human beings? Okay, so ecosystem services, the name itself is uh, quite clear. The services or the benefits which uh, we humans derived from nature or the ecosystems of habitat. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, basically the services we benefit from nature or ecosystems is ecosystem services. To put it more formally, because this definition has been, uh, every, every time over the generations, we have been uh, uh, utilizing the nature's resources for human well-being. But the concept really came into being in the recent years, not uh, so well in the past. So from the 1970s, this got evolved, the era of the environmentalism and all. So, and later on, it got evolved over a period of time. And with the UN uh, Millennial Development Goals, and subsequently, there was an assessment. That is Millennium Ecosystem Assessment of the United Nations Sponsored Program. So mm -hmm. this is which formally put uh, about this concept of ecosystem services into four of the basic concepts. This is a bit of theory, but it is nice to know that it is like... It is simple. Provisioning services are there, then the regulating services are there, supporting services and the culture services. This is how the uh, we understand ecosystem services presently. Services to human beings by nature. Yeah. Very simply, right? Komari, maybe you could simplify that even further for us. I think it's adding value. Mm. I mean, you know, we take things for granted when we live on this earth and we say, okay, the air is there and it's there. Mm. No, that's not true. There's a value that we have to pay for it. So basically what's happening here is the services and the resources, like ma'am said, the resources that we're getting from nature, we are trying to put a value to it mm -hmm. and uh, find out how much uh, as human are we willing to pay for that service. So I think we talk about, always we've been talking about conservation, conservation, you know, save the trees and all that. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, taking the approach of ecosystem services makes more sense because now it's always about take a uh, give and take and it's all about buying and purchasing but these these services that we're getting here right now it's for free however mm -hmm. there's certain services that we can uh, evaluate properly okay we'll come to that later uh, the valuation of ecosystem services and of course the payment for ecosystem services but you know, so this is a very, this is a concept that started in the 70s, we say, you know, with environmental activism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's, it's taken a lot of time to trickle down the concept yes. of ecosystem services. Yes. Now, what do we do first and foremost, or what has been done in terms of like, uh, let's just, let's start with the forest department, you know, with the government, to, to incorporate this concept of traditional, uh, of ecosystem services into their day-to-day -day working or into their policy making. Yeah, so it will be nice to link some of the examples uh, which we have across the world mm -hmm. and in India. Then let's see about Meghalaya. So examples makes better sense for us. We can relate. Yeah. So uh, the nature and the services, whatever services, it's quite linked. Uh, air, as madam, you have discussed, then water. Unless a forest patch is there, there won't be water. The, for the forest catchments or watersheds, mm -hmm. these are the... Uh, uh, sources of our drinking water which makes the springs come alive. 
so in uh, the us they have a very uh, uh, a long running payment of ecosystem kind of system wherein the upper uh, there is for a watershed there is upper region and the lower riparian upper riparian uh, community or land and lower riparian mm -hmm. so unless the upper uh, people who are living in the upper riparian areas protect the forest as it is then the uh, water will not be if they protect then that ensures a flow of water and trickles down to downstream so but they also have livelihood mm -hmm. there's a conflict so having protecting mm -hmm. they have the man uh, they if they protect the forest they should get some remuneration for that mm -hmm. beneficiaries are not there directly because they already have water it's a downstream so a kind of linkage between uh, the downstream people are the benefi beneficiaries and uh, beneficiaries and upper upper riparian streams are protecting so a mechanism by which the downstream can fund the upstream mm -hmm. so that they continue to protect the forest as it is don't deforest it if we deforest erosion and water this so this is basically the concept followed everywhere us also mm -hmm. was uh, through the government they uh, leased out the upper riparian areas as a conservation reserve kind of mm -hmm. and they used to pay annually an amount to the farmers over there to keep the forest in that pristine stage mm -hmm. so this is a mechanism which started there then many of the countries finland even china mm -hmm. they also have this model yeah. in india we have the shimla water catchment mm -hmm. similar thing was uh, being implemented there meghalaya also if you see let's come uh, to our homes yeah, itself it's coming to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we have the city of shillong where where we have our drinking water mm -hmm. it's a forest of upper shillong maflang area all those belts of protected reserve and community forest mm -hmm. which gives the drinking water to shillong right so uh pongari let's talk about uh, examples from the field you've done a lot of field work there so tell us in terms of implementing the uh, the concept or incorporating the concept of ecosystem services uh what work or what experiences from the field can you share with us uh i'll give you one specific um, example of uh, this uh, project that we conducted was funded by UNDP it's okay. on climate change and the stewardship role being played by the community mm -hmm. so uh we <coughs> conducted this project for in, in uh, east khasi hills in pinwas peninsula block we covered three uh, villages we had maulang we have mongonda and tangma mm -hmm. all three villages uh and it, it was more from the climate change aspect so they all agree that they have seen the change in the climate over the years mm -hmm. you know the irregularity in terms of uh, rainfall and so on and so forth right. and uh, when we came to tangbang village it was very surprising all these villages have their own lao uh, adong and lao kentang mm -hmm. right however tangbang did not have any it was only in 1976 the then uh, uh, headman along with the dorbar they said okay what do we leave for our future generation right from where do we uh, you know how do we uh, make sure that we get clean air to breathe mm -hmm. okay or for, for that matter all the other ntfp producers that we can get from the forest and that's when they said okay we need one um, community forest It was a allow allow adam mm -hmm. then so the community came together community came together and they uh, demarcated a land and they said this is going to be our lap adam okay and from there now it's just been a uh, few i mean like 1976 mm -hmm. so it's it's not a very old uh, a community very old forest, forest. Yeah. however they've been able to preserve this forest they know for sure and who are allowed to get inside mm -hmm. is only the healer the mm -hmm. the, tradi the traditional healer that we have okay. only those people can get inside to collect the herbs no other activities is allowed they can um, get wood from there but that's very periodical mm -hmm. so they they have in fact the uh, school in the community taking wood from the from that same forest so they can see the benefits and it's it um, it it amazes us sometimes we think that okay we are the academician okay mm -hmm. we are the so and so and we know more but rather when you go to the community they know better than us right. and the 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 fact that they could recognize that aspect in that part in those years mm -hmm. is amazing and being able to preserve this forest so now they have uh, 
trees which are more than 60 70 years old trees in, in that same forest mm -hmm. because it was protected okay. so these are the services again that they can get from the from the, the forest the services yeah. that they are that, that they are making for themselves they exactly. will be receiving in future so it's exactly. a very important point that you raised there because when you talk about a term called ecosystem services it might seem like a very fancy term but uh, traditionally and traditional wisdom has always understood uh, yes. that the, the existence the coexistence of nature and human beings yes. But uh, let's 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 go into this into a, into a concept now that perhaps might uh, might confuse a few, but it's very important that we talk about it. It's the valuation of these ecosystem services because, like you said, there's now at the end of it a little give and take. So it's not just uh, theoretical, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the concept of ecosystem mm -hmm. services. There's a thing called payment of ecosystem services, and this mm -hmm. is a concept that's been introduced all over the world, and I believe. It's being introduced here now in Meghalaya. So, um, Anu, perhaps you could tell us something about this payment for ecosystem, uh, ecosystem services, especially in the context of, of what's being introduced in, in the state of Meghalaya. Okay. So, I can highlight some of the recent initiatives of the government with regard to payment of ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. So, we have already have a discussion like how ecosystem, they are valuable, the air, water, everything. So, monetizing, attaching a value. Why it is important is that like in an era of ecological economics, it's important to evaluate certain things so that we know how much this particular resource is valued mm -hmm. and how much we are losing if that is not there. Such kind of comparison helps us to understand what we are losing also. So recently, the government uh, this year came up with the payment of ecosystem scheme wherein uh, any natural forest which is, uh, it should be a natural forest, not a plantation, which is more than five hectares, uh, which is protected by the community, uh, will get an incentive of rupees 8,000 per hectare per year. And if this particular forest, in addition, if it is registered as a sacred grove, mm -hmm. because Meghala has a long tradition of sacred groves, mm -hmm. or a community forest, mm -hmm. then the incentive, an additional incentive of 5,000 will be there. Also, if this particular forest is a wildlife corridor mm -hmm. or is it uh, nearing a protected area such that the protected area network is expanded or is an important habitat of many of the species, mm -hmm. maybe hula gibbon mm -hmm. or if it's an elephant transit route or a slororus, anything. So these have an additional incentive of 2,000. So you might think it's just 8,000 or 5,000, 2,000. No, it is... A maiden attempt by a government, the first in India itself, mm -hmm. for evaluating this thing and for uh, incentivizing the people for protection. There was nothing, mm -hmm. so something is there. And again, interestingly, the incentive is given to the people, but this has got certain uh, do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. This has to be used for protection of the forest, enhancement of forest, afforestation, mm -hmm. plus some component. Uh, for the social uh, needs. Mm -hmm. So this uh, takes care of protecting that patch of forest. And the scheme is uh, presently for five years. Okay. And uh, they have to, the people have to commit their land for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that there comes. Because long term only carbon sequestration, resources, exactly. everything happens. So yes. So this is the concept we have started with in the government. Which any, is, any success so far? Has the registration of land or forest been encouraged? Uh, so the recent report, the up-to-date report is that about 40,000 hectares of land has been registered under this particular scheme so far. Okay. And the process is on. And another important thing is that Meghalaya is also a very important state mm -hmm. which is having community reserve. Mm -hmm. Community reserve is a protected area under Wildlife Protection Act other than the, the wildlife sanctuaries or national parks. But our state is in fact a pioneer in community reserves. Mm -hmm. So since that one incentive is additional incentive, lot of people are coming forward for registering the traditional like village forest mm -hmm. as community reserves. This will have a huge impact in increasing the protected area network of the state. Okay. So that is also a very good 
uh, trickle down effect of this particular sounds, scheme. Sounds very encouraging at this stage. So, all this, of course, the protection and the conservation, because we mentioned wildlife, yes. we mentioned nature here. Of course, we have to mention biodiversity, right? Exactly. Uh, the concept of ecosystem services is very closely tied to the conservation of, of biodiversity. Would you like to add something on that? I on think uh, at this point, I'd like to highlight the, you know, um, uh, the work which was carried out by GIC in collaboration with uh, IMI, the Indian Mountain mm -hmm. Initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, SMDS, integrated mountain yes, initiatives. sorry, Integrated Mountain Initiatives. Um, so uh, here, the 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 area where they selected for this study was the um, Malai Soma Ma area. Malai Soma area or the Hima of Malai Hima, Soma. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I think they have around fifteen villages out there and mm -hmm. out of which they have started uh, you know carried out the study for five villages mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and basically here what also why is this area important is because it's the uh, place where you get the uh, colloquial birds yes. so one of again a species yes. an important mm -hmm. species besides other species mm -hmm. which are also found there the mm -hmm. biodiversity is rich um, so how do you tie up this so the as we all know there's always a conflict between nature and you know and human and you know the wildlife and human uh, settlements so uh, in this particular report you will see that how they have managed to come with a plan mm -hmm. how they can have the ecotourism which means that they can have the livelihood mm -hmm. which is very nicely intertwined with the biodiversity of that place so you'll find they've done a, a nice SWOT analysis they've carried out all the uh, required analysis and they've given a very good recommendation mm -hmm. and I think this particular report was uh, released by uh, last year uh, okay. and uh, by our tourism minister so I think this is something which we need to do and here you will see that how this is more of a community-based initiative mm -hmm. community oriented initiative yeah. and it cannot be a, like a one man doing it mm -hmm. but the community as a whole has to come together exactly this is community involvement when we talk about uh, ecosystem services of course it's not uh, academic or it's not at yes. government level of course yes. it needs the direct uh, engagement and participation of, of the communities mm -hmm. so you know let's let's come then towards the end of this discussion and 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 talk about, you know, some of, let's talk, we, we talked about community involvement and I think this is where most of the challenges lie, right, yes. for ecosystem services. So maybe, Anu, you could go first and highlight some of the challenges we face, you yeah. know, with the ecosystem services, especially to do with getting communities involved there. So, uh, for us, uh, when we see the primary thing, the land tenure system of Meghalaya, yeah. this itself is kind of, if you see it's a challenge, it's a challenge. But if you see it's, it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity. So let me put it like this. Uh, the state of Meghalaya the for, uh, is having a forest cover of 76%. Mm -hmm. So this is based on the uh, state of forest report by the uh, Forest Survey of India, mm -hmm. which came out in 2021. So as a state, we have 76% of forest cover. Mm -hmm. And as a hill state, it is very important that 3 by 4th of our area should be under forest because we are in a very ecologically fragile system. Mm -hmm. We have to have that cover for our system. But the second point, we have 76% uh, of forest, but what is under the government control? It is less than 6%. Right. But the, so the majority, 90% of the forest belong to the community. Mm -hmm. So this is the greatest challenge. Any initiative with government alone cannot do. It needs community participation. Mm -hmm. So the whole system is evolved around that. Mm -hmm. When just to take the example, what ma'am was telling is that Malay Somat mm -hmm. uh, area. That is also a very important patch of mm -hmm. uh, area where the remaining habitat of Ulob Gibbons are there, other than the main forest areas of the Nongkhilam or mm -hmm. Nokrek or Balpakram mm -hmm. and certain small community forests. Mm -hmm. So they have had the, it is good that from 2015 they were working yes. and now like to institutionalize, how to institutionalize this. Mm -hmm. So they, they need a structure. Mm -hmm. So again, this Malay Somat is also coming out, is uh, working with the department. Now they are, uh, they are willing to declare the land as community reserve. Mm -hmm. So that is a basic, we have to have institutional structures. Again, Meghalaya has, is one of the state having a higher number of sacred groves like right. 120 plus sacred groves. So for conservation is not something new for our people. Mm -hmm. 
it's always in our ethos if you go down to the people they know better wisdom they know a forest why the secret goes over there the it's the wisdom of the our ancestors that a patch of a forest should be conserved to have proper water to have a, you know a forest derived resources timber for the houses basic fruit our diet consists of a variety of uh, forest produce ferns or like everything we had wild edible plants and yes the so yeah. these uh, so we have the basic structure our uh, model might be different from the rest of india where the government will be the pioneer in taking mm-hmm. but here we have an alternate model to offer to india and rest of the world mm-hmm. where the community led model of conservation by way of community reserves by way of collaboration with the people uh, to come up with initiatives like this mm-hmm. so the challenge of uh, having the people's control is in fact a very good thing that we have an alternative model mm-hmm. the other can, other states have gone far but without people's participation natural resources people at the villages are the custodians if we don't have a partnership with them mm-hmm. this won't succeed so this is this challenge is in fact the greater opportunity also mm-hmm. for us to evaluate this because this has been it's not nothing new right. for us so this is how i see it so uh, kong lari maybe the opportunities from you uh, uh, anu that talked about you know yes posing uh, transforming a challenge mm-hmm. to an opportunity but there are also opportunities like you mentioned the uh, you know tourism exactly uh, the, these opportunities that ecosystem services offer so maybe mm-hmm. you'd like to wrap up by mentioning a few of them i think opportunity taking uh, again the crew from man when when she talks about you know the alternate that we have here mm-hmm. it's amazing as she said the 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 fact that majority of the land is owned by the community it mm. can be considered as an opportunity as well as a challenge right so but opportunity weighs more more higher in this case i feel that mm. the fact that it's with the people the only approach here that will, that has to differ is uh, approaching the community and it cannot be coming from the government so the awareness is required and opportunities are amteen let's just take one example of wari khanga or the fish sanctuary that we have in in garo uh, garo <coughs> land so the concept of wari khanga and how it is not just preserving the fish but also ensuring that they have for future use okay the the, the fishes for them but also it has boosted the the economy of the people through tourism so tourism is there Uh, in a very big way traditional medicine i think uh, we will all agree that you know when it comes to these uh, remote areas it's the traditional healers who is providing the primary who's a primary health taker mm-hmm. right so he's the one who's who's taking care of the people with his medicines but where is he getting his medicinal herbs it's again from the forest right. so so that can be taken a big way because i must you we've done a lot of work with the traditional healers mm-hmm. i'm very passionate about it and we can see a lot of things that can be done to promote livelihood from from traditional medicine as well so i think those two areas are one of the big ones in in terms of opportunities right so i think we've learned quite a bit here in a short discussion at least uh, as a primer to as a introduction to ecosystem services i'd like to thank the both of you for for this very enlightening discussion so to all our um, all our viewers out there ecosystem services as you've heard is nothing but nature services to human beings that's its own style in itself and in a society like ours like meghalaya where there's always been traditional wisdom in relation to conservation of nature ecosystem services are nothing new but a continuation of our relationship to nature in a healthy way there are challenges and yet there are opportunities as you've heard from both our panelists there so thank you very much to all of you for joining us in this discussion